There are lots of ways to get energy. There are non-renewable sources such as coal, oil, natural gas, and nuclear energy. There are renewable sources such as hydroelectric power and wind power, but one clean and efficient way to get energy is by using the power of the sun. Scientists have invented something called solar panels, or photovoltaic cells. Photovoltaics generate electricity when exposed to light. Many people have solar panels and know that they are good for the environment, but do people really know how they work? We took it to the street to find out. Do you happen to know what this is? Um, I, I don't I don't know that I do. No. No. Thank you so much. No. I don't. I well, do not. Um, what shape it is? A microphone. <laughs> no, no, this. Um, it looks like some sort of circuit board or a memory chip. That is a solar panel. Very good. It's a solar panel. Yeah, that looks like so. a solar wafer. <laughs> well, um, it looks to be uh, uh, a piece of a photovoltaic panel. Am I am I close? Do you know how solar panels work? <laughs> the sun? Yeah. The, no. Not really. Um, a very rudimentary understanding of how solar panels work. But Could I, you I, try I, to explain? Uh, you want me to? Uh, you put me on the spot. Vaguely. They convert the energy of the sun into electricity. I hope. Mm -hmm. the, the sun. Um, Shines on the uh, on the solar wafer, and there's a chemical reaction with the um, silicone inside the wafer. That there's an electron transfer that uh, goes uh, into some wires to be able to feed our electricity system. Okay, so the Massachusetts Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs knows how photovoltaics work, but we think that you should too. To better understand how PV works, we have to break down the panel into its separate parts. Solar panels have three main parts. The top is a layer of non-reflective glass, which not only protects the panel, but also prevents the light that is reflected off of the PV cell from escaping. The bottom is just the base. The middle layer is the really important one. The middle has two layers of silicon in it, but it is the interaction between these two layers that allow for the photovoltaic effect to take place. This is silicon. It has 14 protons, 14 neutrons, and 14 electrons, with 4 electrons in its outer shell. But the silicon atoms in solar panels have been modified. This silicon is infused, or doped, with a small amount of another element. This element makes the silicon either more likely to need an electron, or have an electron to share. The bottom layer of silicon is typically infused with boron. The outer electron shell of boron has three electrons, which is one fewer than silicon. This leaves the bottom layer of silicon with a slight positive charge and needing an extra electron in its outer shell. This is called p-type silicon because of the positive charge. Meanwhile, the top layer is infused with phosphorus. The outer electron shell of phosphorus has five electrons, which is one more than silicon. This leaves the top layer with a slight negative charge and needing to give away an extra electron. This is called n-type silicon because of the negative charge. But how do these electrons get freed up? Thankfully, photons from the sun come to the rescue. When photons from the sun hit the silicon in the solar panel, it knocks loose the extra electrons from the n-type silicon. These electrons travel toward the p-type silicon. This forms an electric current, which is picked up and carried away by a copper wire running between the PV cells. However, the electricity that is generated by PV cells is direct current power. Unfortunately, in the U.S., most of our homes and businesses are wired to only use alternating current. Therefore, DC power must first be converted to AC power before it can be used. The copper wire coming off the PV cells leads to an inverter. An inverter is a special machine that can change the electricity from DC to AC power. Once the electricity has been converted, it can be used to power things like the TV, the refrigerator, and much more. So what happens when you don't use all of the electricity you generate? There are a few ways to store electricity within your home, but most are inefficient. Most people rely on net metering as their storage solution. With net metering, when you produce excess electricity, you send it to the power grid and your electric meter rolls backwards. During times when your system is not producing electricity, like at night or on a cloudy day, you can pull electricity from the grid and your electric meter will roll forward. 
you are essentially using the grid to store your solar electricity. Any additional electricity generated can also be used by other homes and businesses on the grid. To get electricity from the grid, you have to pay for it. However, if you have solar panels and send your extra electricity back to the grid, the power companies will credit you for the electricity you generated but did not use. So by getting solar panels, you could save the earth and save your money all at the same time.